Okay, we've got time. We're good. There you so, go. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's one last, the, the same time, last time I did the same thing. I, I mean, yeah, I she did. <laughs> I put it in right and it said, no, that's no, not just right. kidding. <laughs> Jack put it in left instead of right. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so when this, oh, we oh, then I'm an old buddy. Yeah. 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 I have two kids that are left. No, no, I Oh. I did give her a warning. <laughs> it's the one part I did right. <laughs> exactly. So. <coughs> yeah, we'll get through. It's about time we figured out they'll change it all on us again anyway. So. But you're still here. I'm here. We know you're here. I think we can yeah. manage. Uh, Get your paper, Jim. I did. You did. Did you have paper? I did. Okay. Get me to the website. It's a big deal. Okay. Roll call, please, anyone. Can you roll call for me? Cheryl, um, Chair Delvo, yes. Vice Chair um, Schuler is excused. Um, we have Alder Randy Scannell. Present. Debbie Dean. Here. Kathy Hinkless. Here. Melanie Parma. Here. Is here. Well, thank you. Oh, and great. Jessica Ganther is excused. excused. Very good. A motion to approve the agenda, please. Motion to approve it. Brad, uh, Alder Second. Scannell and Kathy. All those favor say anything aye. Aye. Totally aye. Motion. Motion carried. Uh, regular, regular business number one. Consideration of possible action on the second amendment to DA 21-01 with Merge Urban Development. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll give it, just put, up, put up uh, put my screen up here and just do a couple slides here. Uh, just to let you know, again, we're looking at a, uh, get that minimized so we'll get you guys up there. See you twice. There we go. So there we go. Um, so the first one, we have a couple of uh, amendments to merge urban development we are working on right now. We're hoping to have them a little bit further along uh, with the holidays. They just haven't quite gotten, uh, still reviewing a couple of items for it. But we did want to take the chance still to at least present it and discuss with you guys. Hopefully to make us a little more efficient. Uh, the next meeting will be on December 12th. So uh, likely we might need a closed session for this item on the 12th. Right. Uh, but we wanted to at least kind of go through uh, some of the items that we're kind of working through uh, with with merge at this time, um, as soon as we're seeing with with other projects, their costs are still uh, exceeding uh, what they were originally budgeting and, and, and dealing with. So we're looking at um, you know, last conversation we've had with merge was just this morning. Uh, their overall amount of TIF assistance hasn't been that they need. They they need to make an additional request. They have not ascertain exactly what that amount is. They have provided us information that kind of explains uh, their internal. Um, Rate of return and where, where it is right now, where they think it needs to be in order to move forward with the project. But we said, guys, just give us the number. <laughs> and then we don't, we don't have to assume when we back calculate it, just tell us what it is the number that you need. Uh, so we are looking at that. The other item we were looking at, um, our first initial conversation with them, we we're looking at possibly delaying the project up to a year, uh, which staff had significant concerns with. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this body knows better than anybody that obviously every year you delay a project is one year of increments you don't get to generate. The city doesn't get it, and the development project doesn't get it. Um, so we kind of we kind of pushed back a little bit on that. They have since reset that, you know, are looking at probably trying to keep that one building one. Um, folks, remember the, the kind of the initial issue was with was with the soils on the site yeah. mm -hmm. not being quite structurally where they thought they were going to be. Uh, essentially, what they did, uh, they would have they they, we, they had. Some of it was incorrect or old dated information in addition to their soil tests that they did. City got them more current information that we had from our aspect of our project. They combined that with their soils tests, reevaluated it, determined that the, the, the site of building two was actually buildable and ready to go. So they're moving that to be the first building to go in yeah. and then letting the, the, the initial site settle for another year to make sure, just to give it one more, another year of settling to make sure that it's structurally where they need it. So that was kind of the initial delay in terms of what they were evaluating on the site. 
Um, so we essentially had, we had two conversations with the you know, one with the staff person and then one with the principal. Uh, the staff person was trying to get another year. The principal has come back and said that they believe that they can keep on pretty close to the original schedule. They may need a couple of extra months, but it still would fall within the same calendar year from a, so from a TIF purpose, just, just by switching the buildings. Yeah. yeah, so but by doing that, essentially that allows us to stay on the, the, the TIF schedule that we had originally had discussed with them by doing that, which again, saves an entire year of increment for them and for us. Um, as folks are probably, this body's very much well aware, uh, we, are, we are spending money on public infrastructure out there and we need increment to pay bills. <laughs> uh, so we got to, we have to make sure that, that project is happening and keeping that moving forward. If they do, you know, certainly if they really come back and they say that, that, that there is going to be that extra year uh, in terms of probably get that increment in, we're going to have to have a, probably a, a serious conversation with certainly with this body uh, and with them as an applicant. But right now, we're confident that they're going to bring in uh, a construction schedule that still keeps them on task. Good. Uh, but we're waiting to see that finally. So some of the other items we've discussed, we talk about the order of buildings. The other thing that that does for the city is that it changes the street, order of street infrastructure that we're going to be building <laughs> in terms of accessing the site. We need to kind of flip that around with our public works staff. So we were kind of at least made them aware of that and some subject to final design and information there. Um, you know, the most significant change we've seen, uh, obviously I think we've mentioned it before, is the change in the mill rate. Uh, essentially that went from, I think, like a the but the, the mix was like a 15 to 21 million dollar range was kind of the project 15 million 15 was the minimum we were kind of anticipating a 21 million dollars kind of the range in the original development agreement so we took the, the under the original uh, agreement that range of funding I, I believe was more uh, in the seven to nine million dollar range with the new mill rate that's down to the five to seven million dollar range in terms of what possible increment can come in on the project over the life of the TIF so that's a pretty significant yeah. drop Yes. Uh, so we certainly made Merge aware of that and asked them to reset their their uh, their pro forma. And our understanding is the good news was they had not really assigned that to a lender or anything. So essentially, that it just means they're they're getting they're they're paying less taxes and they're getting less increment. So it still balances out for them because they don't have the outlay then of the additional taxes. Mm -hmm. So in their case, it's going to work out okay. We think right. uh, for someone who has maybe assigned and allocated that to to their bank as as part of their collateral or their payment, that could be a problem. <laughs> so they're anticipating a certain payment coming in and then it suddenly drops to a different one. So we don't believe that's going to be a problem here, uh, but they're still working through some of that. Uh, other thing is I think they're looking at a property transfer date uh, around February of, in 23, so getting that, uh, getting that in just after the first of the year. Um, trying to schedule exactly when we're committed to doing the phase three shipyard improvements trying to tie that to, to, to and kind of coordinate that with the end of their project and making sure that those are lined up to the extent that we can. Because of the switch in the street infrastructure, we had to add some language regarding uh, temporary fire access, make sure fire department could get in during construction, uh, fairly standard. We did add language about the acknowledgement of the soils conditions. So essentially saying, you guys you know, understand that there's no additional <laughs> cost or anything here. This is your, you guys are working on this. The agreement does not entail that. So anything further would have to be an additional ask to bring forward. Uh, and then we also been trying to be a little bit better about uh, adding very clear language in our um, yeah. kind of our, the corrections uh, language that says, very, very clearly states, we have the ability to withhold pay go payments if there's any sort of non-compliance going forward. So that, that was kind of insinuated in previous older agreements, but we've tried, been trying to be a little bit better about making sure that that's very clear and clearly stated that that's probably our default mode of, of, of if there's a problem to get something corrected essentially withholding that tip payment until that's fixed so those are kind of the key uh, areas in terms of what we're working with on there so obviously we'll see exactly what they come back with uh, on the amount of overall tip assistance normally we'd be we would say you know we can mess around with that percentage and get that a little higher but obviously we're counting on that Absolutely. that increment from the city standpoint to pay for the infrastructure that we're doing on there so Absolutely. there's yeah. going to need to be some some balancing and making sure that that's still something that's 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 manageable and doable so pretty confident you can come up with the development agreement by the full Oh, absolutely. I mean, the number of the number of change. Most of these other changes have actually been incorporated already, um, so we're we're good on there. So it's really just finalizing the language regarding the tip assistance and the, and the schedule is really where we're at. So um, the version that we've kind of provided in the in the uh, one that Kathy had trouble opening is yeah. out there. Uh, really, as a reference, we just kind of marked, we redlined in the, the existing agreement to show exactly where the changes will be. The actual format of the changes will be more of a uh, you know second amendment. This section is being replaced with this section. This section being replaced with this section. And it'll just be attached to the original agreement. 
So that will be the final format. So, but for just for ease of understanding what areas might be changing, we just kind of stick with the, the red line version that's in the draft that's in your packet. Mm -hmm. so, you so. know, what was, I'm sorry. No, please. Yeah. What was the original amount of TIF assistance? Was that 70%? 70% is where we're at on this one, yeah. So and then, because in this case, we you know, didn't want to go much higher than that one because of the amount of infrastructure we are paying for yes, uh, right. with the project. So, yeah. yeah. So today, we could use a motion probably to delay the final review to the 12th. I'm seeing here. If you can right. actually get it to go, we're supposed to go here. Come on now. Not there, there we go. <laughs> so we just asked for a motion to hold till the meeting on the 12th. Yes. It's actually the 13th. 13th. Oh, 13th, sorry. Yeah. Tuesday, yeah, that Tuesday. It's, it's 13th, so. Motion to hold. Second. A motion by uh, Owen Scandal, second by Kathy. Any questions or comments in regard to the motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Perfect. Good, good luck, Neil. Yeah, I, we're we're confident we'll, we're going to get this done. So Absolutely. they've been they've been very responsive here as, as of late, and I think they're they're interested in getting it moving as well. It's it's a private property. Yeah. So. I mean, whatever whatever happens, it's yep. private property. It yeah. is. Absolutely. <laughs> we don't know. I mean, we've uh, a lot of investment right around there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <coughs> item two: consideration of possible action on RDE owned property related to potential reuse. The building at 301 North Adam Street, multiple condominium parcels. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Chair. Out, and then maybe we'll open the meeting. Yep, absolutely. Uh, again, the information that the uh, request is there's three, three definitely essentially three requests as part of what's what I'm being before you today. Uh, one is regarding uh, RDA owned segment of the building, one is regarding a uh, right of way uh, section that the city has that is probably not, we don't believe is necessary anymore. And then a third is a no build easement on the uh, on the Adam Street lot or the three requests that are before you today. I think we put up in your packet there was a brief map that kind of like highlighted exactly where those areas were uh, that are in question. Um, the, the applicant is here today in terms of wanting to you know, give a brief overview of uh, not only their current project but maybe some of the history of how some of these things came about. I think they have a little little background until they wanted to be able to share with us today on a couple of those areas, particularly the RDA owned mm -hmm. segment of the building. Um, so essentially what we need to do today is just kind of uh, we've asked the applicant here to come and provide some uh, a brief overview of, of those three requests. Uh, they have their architect here with them who can answer some technical questions regarding the building space. Uh, and then essentially we'll be you know, asked if we can probably adjourn in closed session to yep. discuss impacts on the, uh, to the Adam Street lot specifically. Yeah, so. So Motion open the floor? Yes, please. Uh, Alderman Scandal, motion second. Second by Kathy. Uh, all those people saying we're saying aye. Aye. Hi. Good afternoon. <coughs> Thanks for taking up our three requests. And whatever you want, you can come sit up here if you want to. Whatever you come, whatever you're more comfortable with. Mostly be Josh and Rick, anyhow. But well, okay. I can kind of lose any crowd of details. But I, I, I'll answer. We were with Bay Lake since they bought that building, Bay Lake Bank, right. back then. But um, just for context of. Entities and ownership in those when you say multiple condominium users, sort of stand, but um, there's currently six condominium units upstairs at the old Boston store, 301 North Adams, and there's six condominium units downstairs. They mirror each other. It's just the way that Bay Lake Bank's architect laid them out when they um, redeveloped the property. When we bought the, fir the six upstairs for APAC, um, we never undid any condominium lines. You know, we just took down all the walls that, that they had in there. So just, so HCW LLC is me, and that's the um, owner of the six units upstairs. I also own that front corner, which is condominium unit 120. That's Bay Lake Food Court Real Estate LLC, if you see it on a parcel map. That's where Herbert and Gerbert still is and Coco was. Mm -hmm. Then there's um, the Spring Lake Church that purchased their condominium units on the um, east side of the building. And then the Smets sold their units, which is the job center and now a staffing company, to an out of 
date, I think, owner. Now, I think that's called 301 North Adams Investment or something. Just for context of who those are. And, and I think this um, the applicant here looks to be HCW LLC. That's under the context of redeveloping the second floor to, to apartment units. I'm really, I think I'm here, I think we're all here on behalf of the Bay Lake City Center Condominium Association Inc. <clears throat> that is owned by the condo owners. And as we were working through our plan redevelopments for the second floor, Fisher and Associates identified some kind of, I believe they're just maybe code compliance or, or clean up that really was significant to when the mall got torn down. And um, these issues, I think, existed since then. If you're, Gary, I think you might have been around then, but you know, Schreiber kind of lost their patience you know, with the back wall being unfinished yep. in the old Boston store. We had a bit of, I think it was a million three something, almost a million four. We ended up straightening out that back corner that it went to 900,000, which people still thought was a ton of money. And I think everybody agreed to finish the wall, but it had to be done. That's how that corner got created. Um, I, I have a lot more insight than that, but that, I think that's a, a general um, overview. I, did, you know, I think everybody knows Josh Smith's from our office and then Rick Fisher with Fisher and Associates they can go through more of the, the technical reasons that we're really cleaning up these items on behalf of the condominium association because I don't know that the building as it sits today is in compliance from my understanding. But I'd be happy to answer you know, historically any questions or, or forward looking. Paul, can you just provide just a quick overview of, of the units and just of the residential project specifically for the, the, for the upstairs? Yeah, well for, yeah for if, it, if it's just the upstairs or for both. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know if we have those on slides or not, but we the, the 70,000 square feet on the second floor of the old Boston store building, we've got designed for 72 multifamily units, um, a new entrance off by Northland Road. Um, I think it's nice. I mean, that, that came to me when I was actually about Coco's was still there. I was outside with my kids eating dinner in their outdoor patio, and my kids were 20 ish now. They were like, hey, this would be a cool place to live. And, <laughs> and the call center was going away at that time. We never, you know, I, I think as most of you remember, every time we had a five year lease renewal, we'd come here and, you know, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. say, hey, here's the time to consider this overall read. And it just never, never really <coughs> got traction. So, um, the call center always had good leverage on those lease renewals because who wants to own empty 70,000 square feet? So we think we have a really nice plan. Uh, it's a mix of um, studios and one bedroom. There, there's, still, there's still a four bedroom, there's some three bedrooms. Um, one of the things that, that Rick and Josh figured out, we're gonna call the project city center lofts, is that there was almost like, you know, call it 18, but almost 20 feet of, of um, ceiling height in those old in those floors mm -hmm. and so they we were kind of at 59 units at one point in time for quite a while and it maximized the whole use of the floor and in, in the you know, circulation corridors and elevator shafts and all that. but they they figured out how to um loft many of the units so that now you have i think 18 feet of kind of ceiling height in your in your, in your living room and um a, a loft upstairs that um you know, I, I think at one point I thought that that was going to be a negative to uh, aging adults, but now what I understand is that the aging adults just live on the first floor and the second floor is like a guest bedroom or, you know, storage or offices. So I thought that was really nice. So that, that was the, well, how we went from 59 to 72 units and, um, you know, just made the project more financeable on our end. Um, to use that same shell, but but get more units in there, and gave the building some character and identity. This isn't going to be a, you know, like a, a tune in or Murphy. Like this is like a one off, kind of like the rail yard. Is <laughs> it's like you got to have its own character and build around it. So I think city center lofts is appropriate, and um, I don't know what to do with Bay Lake in the name yet, to be honest. But we'll cross that. But that's that's an so I got to be careful. I'm on here. You know, it's really the association because we yeah. own seven of the 12 units there. But um, Spring Lake has been an amazing partner. I can't say that I really know the owner. 
of, of the other two first floor units there. But is that how are those market yeah. rate units yeah. called? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Market rate, so you said? Yeah. yeah. Market rate? You know the diagrams of what this is going to look like? I mean, not a lot. Yeah. Is that on the unit? Did it have the unit layout? Or it must have done. I got, got the one below. It. it looks like it's got. Let's see. Let's see. Because there, yeah, there's a great I four plan. Yeah. 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 And it's not. I'm not seeing the, the new units one. It's like more of the existing stuff. I said, if you could just pass that one around, sure. yeah. that would be great. Is that first floor, Josh? <laughs> so obviously the couple change to the units is certainly big, but I think also the addition of the windows to the outside. Oh, uh, that's a good a point, Neil. Component. Thanks yeah. for bringing that up. There are pretty significant skylights in the units because it's a big square, right? So it's, it's we, we met with um, four different property management companies. The appraisal came back really nice, um, but there's there's concern, right? When it, first thing that comes to mind is no exterior windows in some of those interior. Right. But they they did an amazing job of saying, "Hey, we're going to have these big skylights." The how the hallways are super wide. I mean, sixteen feet, sixteen yeah, feet wide. 16, yeah, so that, that's a really nice hallway corridor. We're looking at some of the um, <laughs> some different kinds of graphics in here, so it can kind of feel like a street. You're going to have really tall windows out to those common corridors because of the lofted units and things like that. So I, I think it's really taken on a great identity because I'm just as, it's our financial butt on the line, you know, so you got to be able to answer those questions. We're cutting in more windows on the exterior of the building, which maybe is part of that no build discussion. I, I don't know how that plays into it, but um, more, more windows into the units, saving all the windows that are there. Yes. And I think to, to be clear that you know we're, this this is not uh, what we're looking what we're asking for here is it's not an approval of the project essentially right. from a zoning standpoint they don't need require approval it, this this is a consistent it was site plan review and building plan review but there is not a a, a a zoning component to this discussion so we're really look, looking at at the, the three requests that they have before them are on the uh, yeah the, the the no build easement the right of way vacation and then the the actual disposition of the RDA old corner so just to be clear on that so folks are right. wondering why we're not having a little bit more focus on that aspect of it that is essentially that, that is an approval is that, that's outside of what we're talking is about that here patio is so. on the second floor the new patio yes. there's a new yeah. patio that gets built out the second floor like a common area um, out there the the loading dock part of that gets converted yes. to like bike storage yep. there's some um, and new entrance and again that's condominium <coughs> property so we're going to yep. offer that to all the condo um, owners in the building but the association is very much aligned you know with the redevelopment and activation you know, nobody wants vacant space right any idea what the additional tax base will be you remember, we sent it over to Russ. We did have, um, yeah, he did do a preliminary. The appraisal came back at seventeen million, but I, I want to say he was ten to twelve million I, of I assessed was, yeah. value, Gary. Okay, but that's what now. What is this right now, Paul? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's that's considerably less than that. Well, so, we never come yeah. in and asked for our taxes right. to be lowered. Mm -hmm. right. They were they were right. assessed at about six point eight or right. so million, um, but we're you know put another ten million into it. Any other questions for Paul? Uh, um, <coughs> I see, see that you have um, some three bedroom units and four bedroom units, right? Assumption would be that there'll be children in there, correct? One would assume in those bigger units, but I don't see any green space here at all. Is there any green space that is going to be incorporated? Not on this site. There, there is no green space right. to be had on the city site. On, on the, the condominium property, as you know, kind of, I was looking at it as the colored concrete. You know, this, that's yeah. that's kind of the boundary, and then you get the city sidewalks outside of there. The one thing I would that we'll certainly discuss as we talk about the, that no build easement area. If there's some, what is the other purpose of that going to be? Since um, rather than just designated as a no build easement, well, then from our standpoint, if it's certainly on still the city's. The RDA lot. What, what do we use that for? If we can't build there, mm -hmm. so I think that might be one opportunity. Okay. I mean, but that's something that, that certainly needs to be looked at 
in the overall development of the area, but but I do agree with Paul on, on this particular site as it is right now. There there is no right. There, there is no. That's a great there's point. No yeah. space. I, I think we're dealing with that with the um, Broadway lots. I'm sure you, you are. get all these young families because you know, we still have land to be developed at the rail yard. I'm like, well, they're playing I football did. on those open parcels, well, and we haven't kind of moved them on because yeah, with their kids they should be able to play, yeah. but there is no park there either. It, uh, I mean, it's usually a requirement of the tax yeah. credits that. If you have children there, there's X amount of green space. So, I think we'll play in the Northland lobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used to do. <laughs> See? That's what I used to do. You can take them. And then the old Pope's <clears throat> office. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I get your <laughs> point, <laughs> Debbie. If we can, you know. Do something better. It's, I, I don't. There aren't that many of the larger units. I think I'm more concerned with like college kids being in those big units. And we, that we that came up in our we interviewed four uh -huh. um, leasing agents, sure. and and just tried to kind of understand how uh -huh. to best manage to what might show up and present itself without predicting failure, without <laughs> trying it. I mean, <laughs> most of these I think are going to be young professionals. Yeah. There's, there's other. And all the center ones will have the skylight. Skylights down the hallways, down the hallway. and then there's light to come. You know, like you're walking down a street, basically. The sun's up here. Walk down the hallway, and there's like your front doors are there in the hallways again, like you're outside. Almost. And you know, big skylights up high. Yep. And the thought process behind that is that you, you wouldn't in your within those residential units, you wouldn't have large skylights in your home because they're going to be 18 feet off the floor. So as from a long-term maintenance perspective. There's almost no way to service those if you have a problem, because okay. you have to bring a lift into someone's living room and go up 18 feet. So I yeah. said, well, let's let's yeah. make it feel more like an like a exterior well, unit. So, you know, you you're walking down the the street for the 16 foot wide hallway. That's the street. There's an entrance door and a couple of large windows that opens to your oh, open living room. That's I open see. up to your loft. Okay. So a lot of these units are. That's how they're getting. Yeah. And that's so, how they're getting up. You know, with everybody's, you know scalable life where either you go to the office or you go from home what's great about i think these loft spaces is that everyone has a, at least a space for you know one work at home desk mm -hmm. we're still negotiating on whether they're screened or whether it's glass or not but <laughs> <laughs> my desk is usually messy i want it solid you know <laughs> but the glass is cooler for the railing so um, yeah so we're just trying to build in features that let you know people live in you know this uh, in the downtown area that has a lot of features. So when we put these lofts in, it makes, you know, a one bedroom, potentially a three bedroom. So there's just a lot of space available in these units. So whether you use it as a, the extra bedroom as an office, or you use the loft, or you have a piece of exercise equipment, I think there's just a lot of features. So visually it's this. like uh, exponent square feet down the, down the center, right? Um, no, there's and actually. Then, and it halves off. Um, the there's actually, there. uh, yeah, so the, so the living rooms are roughly 16 by 18, mm -hmm. and then the loft begins. Yeah. You know, whether you enter from the back or enter from the front. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Um, we met with, you know, the, the management, four management companies, the appraiser, a couple of financial institutions. I, I think that the fitness room, community room, you know, those were kind of the must-haves you know, to start with. I think they did a, a, an amazing job of taking a challenging big box and giving it character you know, as far as the overall neighborhood, if you look at that second floor as a neighborhood. But mm -hmm. parking was a concern along the way, but I just see we get something back from Chris and Ab. There's ample parking at the ramps, and the appraiser didn't seem to think that there was any issue with um, ramp parking, you know, either is it that you know, just thinking about what what could be better on there, but yeah. I think we got a good path. Well, do you have a, a schedule in mind, Mr. Chair? Yeah, we're working on. Um, I, I think the variances are approved now, and that had to do with some of the fire safety mm -hmm. and um, ceiling heights at one point in time. But those those are all approved by the state of Wisconsin with support of all the departments, I think, at the city. Um, still doing final interviews with contractors, but uh, probably looking for demolition in the next month, yeah, which would be the first phase. I think we got the letter of no um, environmental issues. Yep. Josh did all the sampling in there. 
and um, so that's good. Yeah, we'll, I, I, we'll I, take I, that one. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> those little beans that, that they have that, that spray fireproofing on, fireproofing on, but apparently it's okay. <laughs> so that's good too. Okay. So, but yeah, hopefully have something delivered by late next fall. The inner wall would be just like a regular apartment building kind of thing, or the inner walls separating the units. From so um, actually, no. So these walls are you know 18 feet tall, and a wood wall like you normally see in normal apartment construction isn't very soundproof. Right. So That's what I was So we're using um, a system of uh, metal stud walls like you use in a commercial office. Oh. And we're using. Um, Rather than a four inch wall, we're using a seven inch wall. We're using, we're also using that same wall to support our secondary floors. Sure. So um, basically the units are roughly 16 feet wide, which aligns with the current window configuration. So when we go to put windows in, we plan to cut out and rework the brick openings the, where the false ones are. Mm -hmm. Most of those will have windows in them. So we're not trying to rebuild the exterior, we're right. trying to just you know, use the, the features that already has so that, you know, th it's not substantially different in character. Um, so the units are typically 16 feet wide, and then there's um, a 16 by 18 living room as a minimum size, and then the upper loft begins, and underneath the loft is, you know, the the kitchenettes and the bathroom, and, a, and every unit is accessible on the first level. Second level units where there's no lift, so the lofts, are not required to be accessible. So they just have uh, two foot eight inch doors instead of three foot doors. And that was a request from the ownership because there are, you know, if you've been in hotels, there's only a certain number that need to be accessible. We have a number that are just much higher than the minimum. So we can, you know, accommodate, you know, whatever the needs are for the users. Um, the other feature that I really liked about this, you have talked about green space. And one of the things I noticed about that is it's a, it's a very nice professional entrance on the main level. And now we're introducing a bunch of you know residents, which you know they're going to be in shorts and enjoying the boardwalk and stuff. So I said, what this place really needs is its own entrance. So on the north side, uh, where the there's a new covered entrance area with a screen wall around it. So if you bring your bike, you can just park your bike behind the screen wall, or you can bring it inside into a large storage room. There's a secure entrance there, so if you're getting pizza delivered, or your <laughs> groceries are getting dropped, there's a spot for that. There's a spot for you know, but that's all on that on that north side where the parking is right along the, the curb side there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of my parking spot when I go. It's, <laughs> that's why I know it's available. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, I, th I think that you know, spending time around the building and just seeing how how the neighborhood works. And I've been coming downtown. My son works uh, downtown, so I've downtown often. And. Uh, so it's just you know just trying to get a feel of how that building works and what would be better. So so that gives my new entrance there gives all the tenants access to the freight elevator. So move-ins should be a breeze, I hope. Um, and a loading dock. Yeah, and there's a loading dock, so you can gain access to the freight elevator <coughs> either from the loading dock side if you're using a moving company or through that door or whatever. So there's a lot of good access, and it also gives you a secure access point to get to the elevator. So if you're a uh, let's call it an after hours visitor. Mm -hmm. um, the pizza delivery guy coming up to deliver the pizza comes in the back door, either uses the stairs or comes back around and goes to the secure access elevator. Um, so they've got a, basically a designated elevator. Mm -hmm. um, the elevator from the center, uh, uh, in the center of the building, you know, can be used. It's got its own access. There's a, there's a uh, at the top of that elevator. There's a spot that's uh, the manager's spot right out the, right the other side. So there's, I think there's good control spots, good ways to, you know, good access for the tenants, good separation for the tenants, uh, security for all their stuff. Any other questions? Uh, I, I, I know um, I have some questions with regard to the property that we own. Mm -hmm. you, the impact on that, I know Neil does, Close. the staff. So we're going to go into a closed session. Just I, just have, I just wonder, are you activating the roof <coughs> at all? Please. At this point, no. That path. We tried it, okay. it was just, yeah, okay. too pricey. At this point, yeah. it's not going anywhere. Okay. So cool. we built the approximately, I think it's <coughs> 20 by 20-ish uh, patio, outdoor patio over the top of the new entrance. Oh, okay. On so the some outdoor space. Yeah. Cool.
With that in mind, I entertain a motion. Would like regular business? Motion to go back in regular uh, business. Second. A second by Debbie. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, somebody saying aye. Aye. Motion carried. And, and, and like I said, we, I know we all have some concerns about the uh, RDA property. So now I will entertain a motion to go into closed motion session. Motion to go into closed session. Second. Alderman Scandal and Kathy. Uh, and we would use, uh, read the verbiage, please. Okay. Um, the authority may convene in closed session pursuant to sections 19.85. 1E, Wisconsin says, for purpose of deliberate, deliberating or negotiating the sale of public properties, invested with public funds, or conducting other specified public business as necessary for competitive or bargaining reasons. The authority will thereafter reconvene an open session pursuant to section 19.85. 2, Wisconsin states, to take on action on items discussed in closed session, if appropriate, and to consider the remainder of the agenda. Very good. Neil, help, help, please. Or, uh, Cheryl? I'm gonna I, I can get here. I got. I can fire it up here. Hold on. <laughs> We're top here. We'll see. Uh, Delvo. Yes. Uh, Scannell. Hi. Dean. Here. Pinkus. Here. Parma. Here. Are we voting? To go. Voting. To go in closed session. Yeah. We're We're in closed session. Like closed session for just the RDA and staff. Yes, just RDA and staff. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Recording stopped. Thank you. Everybody else on here is good. It'll only be an hour. Yeah. We'll call you back there. Yep. Let me bring that up here. We'll see. Okay. Um, motion to go back in open session. Uh, Delvo. Yes. Scannell. Yes. Dean. Yes. Pinkfist. Here. Parma. Yes. Here. Go back in open session. <laughs> I think I had to do something different. <laughs> yeah, that's mine. Just saving my spot. So we are back into open session of looking for a motion. Motion to <coughs> for staff to proceed as directed. In close session. Second. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I discussed in closed session. session. Yep. Yes. There's a, a motion and a second. To have staff proceed as discussed in closed session. Any questions or comments? If not, all those in favor of the motion, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. Well, okay. we don't have it. You'll have the full year end uh, update at the next meeting. Okay, sure. Okay, that's fine. Uh, the next meeting is December 13th. A yeah, lucky we'll day, indeed. Yes. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn it. Uh, all those panel. Second. Uh, all those players want to say aye? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Let's do this again sometime. Recording stopped. Good discussion. Good discussion.